broken, fixed. Part two. Oh, that's tight. Oh, that is really tight. Let's try a different type of screwdriver. Is that going to be any better? Which way is that going? Nope. Let's try that then. Wow, that is still too tight. God, that bit is hard. That is astonishing. I cannot believe that someone put a screw in there at Black and Decker. That is that hard. Well, that's most of the head gone. <laughs> That's the pins out. Oops. Let's see if we can get this apart without losing gears everywhere. And we can. Let's have a look at that part. It looks in pretty good condition. It's a little bit stiff, but then is it in the lock position? It is. So let's do it unlocked. Oh wow, this one turns even more nicely than the last one did. Yeah, I would say that's even better. Possibly better condition. Hmm. Now, will this come apart? Oh, is that screw still trying to hold it? Right, I finally screw got through most of the screw head, I think. It still doesn't want to come apart. You can see it's beginning to separate along the sides quite a bit, but there's still a tiny bit of the screw head hanging on in there. And I don't know why, because it looks like it's all been drilled away. It looks like we need an even bigger screwdriver as the lever. The only thing I can think of is that someone has taken this screw out, put glue on it, and then put the screw back, because it will not come apart, as you can see. But we're slowly getting there. Ah, something moved then. I mean, the head of the screw is gone. Oh, I think we may have at last shifted it. Let's just get on with that out. You can see the head of the screw is gone, but the plastic is.
Let's see if we can get that undone. Doesn't really matter because obviously we're never going to use this part again. Right, we know at some point we're not going to want these screw bits anyway. And this was the easiest way of getting them off the last one. That leaves me a tiny bit to tidy up in the bottom. Disconnect this battery because obviously we're not going to be wanting that. Or oh, these two batteries, as it were. And we're not going to be wanting this bit, which is part of the charging system, and we're not going to be wanting that bit, which is part of the charging system. Let's see how dead the batteries really are. Basically nothing. And... Nothing. Found this piece of aluminium. Not sure what it's from, but it's not a bad fit. That fits reasonably well. So if I... Mark in the middle. All right, hole drilled, so we just tap it out to M4 as it's aluminium, it's very easy to tap. Or should I say, it's very soft. <laughs> does that make it easy? I guess it does. Right, that's our ring in. And that fits on there. And the last one, I glued. But this time I'm going to try and drill a hole through there and screw into there. It's not easy to know where to screw, but you can more or less see the centre of the previous hole. We don't need much of a screwdriver to screw through here, so the XO can do it in seconds. I haven't got a hexagonal bit that's 4mm, so I'll have to use a traditional bit. In a shot. Right, that's it. Right, at the moment I'm going for a tiny countersink because I don't want to cut straight through the plastic. Right, now we should be able to put that on there. That should be a good fit, so we should be able to mark straight through so that we know where to drill. And now we just need to drill that. Hole drilled. And just threading M4. M4 countersink bolt. If everything lines up This that needs countersinking a bit better, but that will hold that together. That will hold that together on that side. So let's try going straight to the motor. No, nope, it does. Oh, just about started. So the motor is not very happy. I almost can't see the shaft turning. I can. Ah! Well, that's not a lot of use, then, is it? <laughs> so maybe the motor was turning after all. 
let's put that back on there. It doesn't sound very healthy, but oh no, and it's not going again. Come on, get going. Sounds a bit rough. I think we'll try just a drop of oil on it first. It doesn't feel particularly tight. It's a bit wet where the gears have leaked a little bit of grease, but that doesn't mean it's got into the spindle gear, you know, the bearing part in there. So we'll try a little bit of oil in there. Let's, let's find me micro oiler. Right, so we'll put a tiny little bit of oil. Right, so that's a little bit of oil on that end. Oops, this is stuck to it. Alright, and we'll try and get a little bit of oil on this end. I mean, these are not bearings as such. I mean, they're just brass bushes. Alright, so that's a little bit of oil. And then we'll try... That's the plus, and this is the minus, according to the markings on it. Not that it really matters. I don't think the motor cares one way or the other. Oh, yes, that's definitely starting to sound a lot quieter. I don't know if it's going around a bit slow. Oh, yes, it is, isn't it? Look at that, it stops with ease. No, something's still not right. No, so there's still something wrong with this motor. Oh, well, it looks like we're going to be having fun taking a motor apart then. Before I take the motor apart, I've just been having a closer look at this cog and you might be able to see there's a lot of free play. So that cog is not going to be any good. Right, with these motors, there's they, when they're made, they bend over a, a little tab down there and another little tab down there. But unfortunately you're levering against plastic when you're trying to get them undone so they're very difficult to get undone and it's almost impossible to get a tool down there to actually lever against it so it's all hard. You can see how difficult this is because it will try to jump like that but it is there we are, we've almost got that one, it might not show, but we have almost got that one. And then this one. <laughs> yep, we've almost got that one as well, <laughs> so with a bit of luck, we're nearly there. Oh, there it goes, just sticking out a little bit. Just so we can do the same with that one. Yep, I think that's the same. Well, this car. Oh, yes, it's coming out. God, something feels very tight. Oh, the brushes look okay. What's that bearing like underneath there? It's sort of self aligning. I say bearing, bushing, bearing. You can see it's a bit twisted to one side at the moment, but it, it will more or less self align itself. So, as long as we can get. Can you see how that. So, it's got quite a lot of movement in it, but of course, it doesn't move once it's on there. The shaft spins in the middle. Right, well, I think all of that is okay. This, of course, will sort of be tight because it's got two magnets in there that it's pressing against. Ooh, there it comes out past the magnets. Now, what we're looking for is any debris that could be caught up ah, like that. Oh, there's some other bit there. And that's a problem with these motors because if you use them anywhere where there might be iron filings they've got holes in them to let the air 
flow through to stop it getting too hot so it holds here but of course these magnets would attract anything that's attracted to a magnet as you can see there is virtually nothing in there so I think we're okay on that score so I think if anything it's this bush or that bush that are a little bit tight that one's moving okay so that one just needs oiling or we've got a problem with our dinky little rotor um, it looks okay but it obviously it needs a clean you can see it needs a clean it's uh, got two black lines there where the brushes have been rubbing if I move this little spacer out of the way that'll make it easier and I'll give that a little bit of clean with probably a bit of scotch pot it will be fine oh got two little spacers Let's see if we can get a tiny piece of scotch bright onto there. Got to be very careful you don't accidentally damage the wires because of course the wires are not very thick, about half a mil perhaps. Yeah, that's coming up fairly clean. Yeah, I think that will do. It's not perfect, but it doesn't need to be perfect. Right, let's get the little spacers back on. That one's tight. So that's back on. That's the one at that end. Right, so we just want to make sure that that's got plenty of oil in it. Now it's a part, of course, it doesn't matter if I get too much oil because I can mop it up afterwards. So we get a bit of oil in there, a little bit of oil in there. Don't want too much going through onto the brushes. I don't think that's gone through. How does that feel in there? Just get the brush out of the way so it can turn. No, oh, that's a really nice fit. You can see again the degree of wobbleness, so that's uh, perfectly normal. And that's nice and free. So that seems okay. Let's try this end. Yep, I don't think we'll have any trouble with that spinning, so that one's okay. So if anything, it's dirty contacts, or we've got a problem here where the wires join on. What have we got? One, two, three. Two, three, yep. So three sets of wires. Nothing feels loose. I could put a meter on the connections like you often see people do on YouTube, but to be honest, a lot of the time it makes no difference because you're measuring such low currents that a meter can quite happily tell you everything is okay. And then as soon as the motor starts up and tries to pull more current if there is a problem um, it fails so just putting a resistance meter on here and saying that test to there and that test there and so on not really a great way of telling whether a motor is good or not well, I suppose nine times out of ten it gives you a good enough result but it's still not the ideal method but that seems to be okay so right so we're all on in there so that should be able to go back into there that should be able to spin in there we think we've got any debris out of there that was in there 
So we just need to get this back together. Sometimes these only go in one way. It looks like this one does because it's got a little notch. The biggest problem is getting the brushes to allow this to fit in. So once we get to there, what will happen is the brushes will not allow us to go any further. I need to find something. Let's try this, make sure there's no bits on the end of it. Let's see if we can pull. Oh, it might let us do it from this end on this one. There's one brush out of the way, and then this brush definitely in the way. Right, that one's well out of the way now. That one's well out of the way, and we're on. And where was that line up, Mark? Mm -hmm. There done. we go. All right, before I finally fix it together, let's try. Well, that's working. I'm running this for a little while. You might be able to hear it. It's bombing around. I can't. I definitely can't stop it and I'm running it on 3.3 volts according to my power supply and as you can see it's running fantastically well so maybe that last little clean sorted everything out I'm just going to let it run for a few minutes then I'm going to add a little bit more oil and then I'm going to let it run a little bit longer just to see if we can get everything as loosened up as it possibly can be. Right, that's had about a minute, I would say, running. You can feel it's getting very, very slightly warmer than it was. You couldn't possibly stop that if you tried. So, I think we're good to go. I just need to bend this tab and the one on the other side back, and we should be okay. I'm just trying to knock this tab back down. <laughs> it's not even moving a little bit. Ah, oh, there it goes. Moved a little bit. Right, that's gone a tiny bit. Oh, well, this side's pulled out a bit now. I'm going to try and get that side down. Amazing, you would think that it would easily move. Right, well, that's a minus tab soldered on the minus end, plus end, and a plus end. So we can put that. on there, hopefully. This one's got to double back on itself and go on to there. This is going to sit there, and so with a bit of luck, this will sit here, like that. And then if we turn it to the right or the left, that will give us our direction. I don't know how well you can see in this, but this cog doesn't look that badly damaged in the middle. You can just see a sort of a, a cross part where it would fit on the shaft, and the same on the other end. It's, it's just there. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a tiny drop of super glue on the shaft, push this on, and see if that will hold it a little bit tighter, because it's very, very difficult to get hold of cogs, as I've discovered. Gear cogs are very difficult to buy because it seems that, yes, you can buy lots and lots and lots of gear cogs, 
The problem is finding one of the size that's going to match what you need it for. And I've had lots of trouble with that. Push that on. I don't want any glue to get inside the motor. But that seems to stop there. Battery plus charge wire, battery minus charge wire. Hole drilled so that we can see the LEDs on the circuit board. You can just about make out where I've put the epoxy in from this side and there's the little epoxy window on that side. The screw there holding this is pretty good. So now we just need to start assembling the rest of this. Now we've got a circuit board and that's going these little screws somewhere around here. Oh, there we go, that's that one. Right, before we put the battery in, I'm just going to put the switch slider in because that needs to sit down into there once it's in. This has got to slide through there, so we need enough room for that to go through. I could try putting a groove underneath here because ideally that would be going underneath but there isn't room for the wire to go underneath there at the moment. That sits there when it's in the switch. This obviously needs to sit into its switch part and then the motor needs to slot into there. And then that needs to slot down there and the motor needs to go into its place at the same time so that needs to be in there so if we put a little bit of solder on the end of the wires a little bit of solder on the pads that they're going to go on to I'm not worried about whether they go into the holes or not if they do, they do, and if they don't, they don't. That doesn't really matter. But these two inside holes are the plus and minus holes for charging. I'll just turn that round so it's a bit easier for me to see what I'm doing. And then we've got plus. And that has gone into the hole, so that's handy. So there's our plus wire. And then we've got minus, and that has gone into the hole. And that can go down there like that. And now we should be more or less okay. Sitting that in place. That seems to sit nice. Needs to drop into there. Right now, that's. Oh, there we go, we're in. I don't want to go too many turns. What I'll do is I'll take this out in a moment and have a look and see if it's rubbed against the battery because I obviously don't want that rubbing against the battery. Alright, there we are. I can't tell looking at that which way around that's going. But if it's wrong we can always swap the wires later. But the motor is sounding very good now, so that oil is obviously soaked in nicely. Right, as with the last one, I'm not going to strip this down. You only have to listen. You can tell that it sounds absolutely fine. I think it would be pointless stripping it down. I've put a couple of drops of oil in it. So this should slot into there. And we just need to get everything to line up. So if we turn this end a fraction, 
pin pin one's obviously lined up very straight and the other one isn't why you're not going straight let's try the other way around oh there he goes straight in push that down so they don't even need banging into place they just slide into place perfectly right now have we got it round the right way no we haven't Forwards is going backwards, and backwards is going forwards. <laughs> right, a couple of minutes later, it's going in the right direction now. Nice and easy, just turn the motor up the other way. Don't need to unsolder or change any wires, so that's great. And we can test it out. Pushes those in easier. I know they're only small screws, but I'm only really going to use this sort of thing on small screws. Unscrew. Switch on. We're charging. Now we could just wait for it to go blue to show that it's charged up. All finished. And to prove that I haven't cheated, there's the previous one. This one I've barely cleaned at all. It hasn't had the hot soapy wash or anything, it's just had a gentle wipe down with some alcohol on a cloth and you can see if anything it probably looks cleaner than that one does I haven't done anything to this, no scotch bright, no scotch bright on here it's more or less as it came just wiped down with an alcohol wipe so there we have it, two for the price of one